Hi everyone. Welcome back this week to Reviving Hearts and this overcoming video. We're going to discuss the fact that we're overcomers this week. You know, last week we looked at the kingdom of God and the fact that it is linked to all the seven access keys of growing into Christ that we've been discussing for the last several weeks. And we're going to wrap up this session of our teaching with the fact that we are also overcomers in Christ. Overcomers. Overcomers over the world, the flesh, and the devil. We are overcomers in Christ. That's who we are in the kingdom of God. That's who we are in this earth right now. I want to read you a couple of scriptures here. Now, this one's going to be all the amplified version, so it's a little bit wordy, but I think it really brings it home. This is John 16, verse 33, and it's the last part of that verse. In the world, you have tribulation and trials, distress and frustration. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, and undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Now, of course, this is Jesus Christ talking. He not overcame, not only overcame sin and the devil and death and all his works, but he overcame all the things in this world that could possibly harm us and put us into his position of an overcomer. So I didn't, in other words, I didn't have to go to the front line and fight the war. He fought it for me. And so I am now coming from the point of being victorious already in a war that he already won. The enemy's already been defeated because of Jesus Christ. And now I am just standing in that victorious position. I mean, I'll tell you what we have been offered truly is good news. That's why it was called the gospel. It is good news. I'm going to read up one other scripture here. This is in Revelation chapter 12, verse 22. They won the victory over him, him being the devil. They won the victory over him because of the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much that they refused to give it up. Now, being overcomers, we have in this verse, Revelation 12, verse, uh, actually it's verse, let me look here, I think I'm reading, it's verse 12, verse 11, I'm sorry. It's Revelation 12, verse 11, excuse me. In this verse, he gives us three major elements that cause us to be overcomers in Christ. And the Lord had me write those down here on my board connecting once again to these seven access keys of growth. The first one is the blood. This is connected to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. That kind of without being said, I think everybody understands that. Redemption comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Without him shedding his blood, without him pouring out his life for us and shedding his blood so that we could have remission of sin, we couldn't have been forgiven. We couldn't have had remission of sin, okay? The wages of sin is death. And we would have still had to pay those wages if it weren't for Jesus giving his blood as a sacrifice for us. Now, this was not a, a natural ransom. You know, if somebody in the world is kidnapped, um, you, uh, usually they, they want someone to pay money uh, in order to release this person from being kidnapped. It's a ransom. We were ransomed by the enemy. The enemy lied to Adam and Eve and stole the earth from them, stole their birthright, stole their place uh, in, in the garden of God, and he took over. He became God of this world rather than Adam and Eve. He took dominion. He took control. So we were ransomed. We were literally like kidnapped by him, if you will. But the ransom could not be paid through just normal silver and gold or money. Look at this verse in 1 Peter 1.18 where it speaks about this. 1 Peter 1.18 For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ 
as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He redeemed us with his blood. It took the blood of Jesus Christ. It took the sinless, perfected life of Jesus Christ to redeem us back from the enemy, to pay that ransom for fallen man. It is by the blood that this took place. So if it were not for the blood of Jesus Christ, we would still be in our sin. We would still be controlled by sin. And yet, according to the word, now that we're redeemed, now that we're children of God, we are no longer under the dominion of sin. We now can say no to sin and stay free from it, just like Jesus showed when he walked in this earth. The next thing that we overcome with is our testimony. The testimony. First the blood, then the testimony. The testimony is tied to the word in prayer. Why? Because our testimony, our testimony is the word. This is the testimony. The testimony comes in many ways, okay? Let me, let me look at each one as we break it down here. Now, first let me define what a testimony is, just so we're kind of on the same way of thinking here. A testimony is a formal, written, or spoken statement. A formal, written, or spoken statement. A testimony is evidence. It's a declaration or proof provided by the existence or appearance of something. Or it's a public recounting of a religious conversion or experience. This is a testimony. So a testimony, first of all, let's look at this first part. It's evidence or declaration or proof provided by the existence or appearance of something. Now, according to scripture, the Holy Spirit testifies to us. Now, do you know when you got born again, how did you know you were born again? How did you know that something took place in you, that something changed? Because the Spirit of God moved in. And the Spirit of God, according to the scripture, gives you an assurance. There is this sense of knowing inside of you which is really the Holy Spirit testifying to you, proving to you, witnessing to you, assuring you inside that you are now a child of God. And it is a knowing that you have. Children of God don't go around not knowing who they are. I mean, sometimes the enemy may come to you when you're a very young Christian and try to say, oh, you didn't get saved. You're not really a child of God. He may try to get you to doubt and question because he's just trying to condemn you. But if it's just the enemy, the, the Holy Spirit will be there and he will point out to you that this is what it is and you need to just come against that. But otherwise, you know that you're a child of God. There is an assurance. There is a witness in you by the Holy Spirit that you are a child of God, that you have been redeemed. So first, the Holy Spirit testifies. Listen to the scripture in John 15, 26. Jesus said, I will send you the Spirit who comes from the Father and shows what is true. The Holy Spirit will help you and will tell you about me. So the first part of this testimony is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the first testifier to us about Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit knows all about Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. So he comes in and he witnesses, he bears witness, if you will, in your heart that Jesus is who he says he is, that you have been redeemed, that you have been born again, and then the proof and the evidence begins to come out in, in different changes that take place. But he is the first testifier to the truth of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Then the Word testifies, the Word testifies. Psalm 119, 111, I have taken your unchanging word as an eternal heritage, for it is the joy of my heart. The word testifies. As you get into the scriptures and you read the word, it will testify and give evidence to the fact that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. He did come and live in this, in this world. He did do all that he said he would do. And as you read the scriptures, the Holy Spirit with the word of God will testify and witness to your heart.
that it's all true, that it's all real. He's the one that brings that assurance that it's, that it's right, that it's proven, that it's evidenced as true. He is the testimony. So the Spirit first, the Holy Spirit, and then he takes the Word, and through the Word of God, it also is our testimony. So we overcome. We overcome by the Holy Spirit. We overcome through the Word of God. Do you realize we overcome everything that comes against us? We can overcome through the power of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of the Word, because this Word is true. Everything in this Word that God said is ours is true. It's yours. If he says you're healed, you're healed. If he says you're free, you're free. If he says you're delivered, you're delivered. We can count on the evidence of this word along with the witness in our hearts from the Holy Spirit. Another way that this testimony of Jesus Christ is proven out and showed to us in our life is in Acts 14.3. It's through signs and through wonders. Look at this. Acts 14, 3, so Paul and Barnabas stayed on there for a long time, speaking freely and fearlessly and boldly in the Lord, who continued to bear testimony to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be performed by their hands. Listen, he showed that the testimony of the word that they were preaching about the kingdom of God was true by proving it with signs and wonders that were performed by their hands. Look at this next verse. This is Mark 16, 15. Then Jesus said to them, go wherever you go in the world, tell everyone the good news. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. These are the miraculous signs that will accompany believers. They will use the power and authority of my name to force demons out of people. They will speak new languages. They will pick up snakes, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Now, he's not talking literal snakes here. It says they'll pick up snakes and they and uh, and they won't and they won't hurt them. Now some people have gone way off. The devil's led people way off in Lululand, and there's churches out there, or there have been churches out there where people handled snakes, that type of thing, and trying to prove something. Snakes in the Bible just literally depicts demon powers, demonic powers. Now we are overcomers through the fact also that when we speak forth the testimony of God which comes through the Holy Spirit, which comes from the Word of God. We use the Word of God to overcome the enemy, to overcome everything that comes against us. Signs and wonders follow. It says we'll be able to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We'll, we'll, we'll cast out demons. We'll speak with new tongues. We will have the authority of Jesus Christ to do the works that he did. Jesus said, you will do the works that I did and even greater than these, okay? This is testimony to the fact that we are children of God, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we overcome through these things. We overcome through the testimony. I think a lot of times people think the testimony is just their personal testimony. And so a lot of times um, people think, well, if my personal testimony is not very good, you know, I wasn't redeemed from as much horrible stuff as other people, then my testimony is not very good. This, this, the first testimony that we overcome by people is the word of God. It is the testimony from the Holy Spirit that bears witness in us that everything God tells us is true because God is a good witness. I mean, now listen, if we were in a court of law today, you could put some people up on that jury, up on that witness stand. And people have been known to lie on the witness stand. But according to the scripture, so often we are so much quicker to take the testimony of men, men that are fallen, men that have fallen short of the glory of, of God, men that are capable of lying. And we will listen to what other men say about whatever subject. And we're so quick to believe people, aren't we? 
But why are we so slow to believe the testimony of God? God who never lies. God who is perfect. God no who knows everything. Listen to the scripture in 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. We believe what people tell us. But we can trust what God says even more. And God is the one. God is the one who has told us about his son. Verse 10. If we have faith in God's son, we have believed what God has said. But if we don't believe what God has said about his son, it's the same as calling God a liar. God has also said that he gave us eternal life and that this life comes to us from his son. And so if we have God's son, we have this life. But if we don't have the son, we don't have this life. All of you have faith in the son of God. And I have written to, the, to let you know that you do have eternal life. Now listen, God says you're saved when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you receive the blood sacrifice that he gave for you. And you receive the testimony through God through the Holy Spirit, through the word, that you are saved, that you are redeemed. You can trust God that you are truly saved. So we overcome through that testimony. We overcome through every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You know, even when the enemy came against Jesus in the earth and began to use different things to tempt him to sin, he used the testimony to overcome the enemy, didn't he? That was the testimony. That's what we use to overcome. We use the word. I have used the written word of God by the spirit of God so many times to cast demons out of my own life, to cast demons out of other people, to receive healing from my own body. I mean, I shared, I mean, I've, I've had times where it wasn't somebody physically laying hands on me so that I could be healed. It was just me going to God's word, which is my testimony, and using that word by the power of the Holy Spirit in me that bears witness that that word is true and that word is powerful. And I have been delivered from so many things. I mean, God has healed me. Uh, oh my goodness, he healed me of carpal tunnel in both hands uh, that basically they said I was a candidate for surgery. It was just going to grow worse. He completely healed me of that. He's complete, completely completely, brought me out of a stroke. Um, he's healed me of back problems. He's healed me of depression in my mind. Um, he has delivered me from so many things. And a lot of it came through just the testimony of the word, just believing what he says in the word. And because I believe it, I speak it out of my own mouth. And the Holy Spirit takes hold of that and brings deliverance and healing and overcoming power to whatever it is I'm having to come against. This is our place in the kingdom of God. We are overcomers. First by the blood through Jesus Christ. Then are the testimony that comes through the Holy Spirit and through the word and through prayer. The next thing that causes us to be overcomers is death. Now, remember at the end of the scripture, it said that they did not love their life so much that they refused to give it up. Now, we understand from the scriptures that many people have been martyred for Jesus Christ. I mean, if somebody came to you today and put a gun to your head and said, either renounce Jesus Christ or I'm going to blow your head off right now, how many of us would say, I will not renounce him? Many people have physically given up their lives to be martyred because they would not renounce their faith in Jesus Christ. But we also discussed earlier on uh, in this area of our access keys of surrender, surrender, devotion. We discussed how we need to surrender our lives to God. He purchased us with his blood. He purchased us. You are no longer your own. You were purchased by the precious blood of Christ. That's what the word says. So you, you no longer have ownership of your life, okay? And you have to be willing to let that life go so that you can overcome what comes against you. It's a form of dying, like I shared in the test in the surrender video. 
dying to yourself, dying to your own will, dying to ownership of your own life uh, is not is not easy for most people because we just seem to we we seem to like control. You know, we seem to like to think we're in control, and we just want to go our own way and do our own thing. But until we take the death of 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 self, until we accept the death of ourself like Jesus did, we're not going to overcome like he overcame. Let me read this. Now listen to this. God did not give you his nature and his spirit to just, to just restore your self nature to a better place. Now, he did not come shed his blood, do all that he did so that we could just be better people, so that we could just be a nicer person, so that our self nature could stay intact, but we would just be nicer and kinder and, 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 and religious. That is not why he came. He came to demonstrate to us that death is required in order to receive life. You must die to your old way of living in order to receive life. When you surrender to God and say, God, I want to be born again. Jesus, I, I make you the Lord of my life. Please come in. Take my life. Just take control. Right there, you're saying, I'm willing to give up ownership of my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and let him take control. You are giving it up, dying to it, so to speak. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. And in that place of death, in that place that's connected to surrender and devotion and these access keys, we overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's one of the things that's going to cause us to overcome. Because come on now, sin is not going to be able to tempt you when you're a dead man. If you consider yourself dead to the things of the world and no longer pulled by the things of the world, then the world can't overcome you in that area when you're dead to those things, right? When you're alive to God and dead to the devil, he can't come in and just take control any way he wants to as long as you remain and reckon yourself a dead man. We overcome through death. Sometimes through physical death, if we were ever put in a position to have to be martyred physically, sometimes that way. But we die daily to what we want. We die daily to that old way of thinking and the old way of doing things and the old way of talking. Paul said this. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus. I die daily. I die daily. I die daily. Romans 8, 36. It is exactly as the scriptures say, for you, for you, we face death all day long. For you, we face death all day long. Now listen, Jesus was willing to give his life so that we could be redeemed, so that we could be saved, so that we could be set free. Are we willing to give our lives for him? And really, in these access keys we discussed at the very end here, surrender, mercy, devotion, those things all take death to be able to do. To surrender to God when I want to do something else takes a death to my own plans. It takes a death to what I want to do. It tells that self nature, no, you're not in control anymore. God, I belong to God. I'm not going to do what I want to do anymore. Mercy. We're not, we can't be merciful to people. We can't be so forgiving to people when they've hurt us and, and come against us in so many ways unless we're willing to die to that tendency in us that wants to be vengeful and wants to fight back and defend ourselves. A dead man does not defend himself. A dead man does not defend himself. If we're really dead in Christ like we're supposed to be, when somebody comes against us and begins to say wrong things against us, a dead man wouldn't even take notice. This is where, we're, this is where we overcome. We're dead to those things. And devotion, devotion was all about your one focus, your one motivation in life, your one focus, your one love is God. It is God. It is to please him, to do his will, 
to follow him, to trust him, that takes dying to yourself. There's no room in the front seat for Jesus and your old nature and you. There's you and Jesus and he's directing you, but there's no room for that old nature to come in and try to usurp its demands, right? There's no way. Do you remember when um, Jesus was saying that he was going to go to the cross and he was going to be crucified? And Peter, Peter, right away, he was just hearing the natural part of that. And he stood up and he was like, no, Lord, no, 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 that can't happen. And Jesus rebuked him. And he said, he's, he, he basically said Satan was talking through Peter. Okay? Satan was using Peter's mouth to try to keep him from doing what he was supposed to do. And he made the statement, you care more for the things of men than you do for God. Let me see if I can find it here, if I had it here. Give me just a minute. Um, I think I had it here. Um, yeah, he said here. You do not savor the things that are of God, but those that are of men. So he basically said to Peter, you're more, more concerned about the natural stuff than you are about God's supernatural plan here. That's what happens when we don't stay in this area of death with God. We will begin to get all concerned again about physical things, physical cares, uh, the things of this earth. We're, we're going to get more concerned about the things of this world than we are of what pleases God. This place of death that's very much connected to these last three access keys is essential to overcoming. A dead man in Christ has more power than if you just stay alive in yourself. You know, your old self nature has no power to stand against the enemy. It has no power to stand against sin or death. Your old nature needed to be redeemed. And your old nature, according to the scripture, has been nailed to the cross with Christ. And this new life that you live now, you are dead to that old nature. You are dead to doing your own thing and having your own way. Now you live to follow God. And it's in this place of death to yourself that you overcome. You overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. All these things work together all these things go together with this relationship that God has had us build up with him. We're citizens of the kingdom of God. We're built on this rock foundation of relationship with God. And we are overcomers by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the word of our testimony. And by not loving our lives so much that we won't give them up. You don't love your life like that. You know, Jesus said here, listen to this scripture here. Jesus said in Mark 16, 23, or actually look at 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life, referring to the life here on planet earth, if you desire to save this life, you're going to forfeit eternal life in the kingdom of God. But whoever desires to be rid of this earthly life, die to this life for my sake, shall find eternal life in the kingdom of God. Now listen to that. We have to be willing to lay down the life that we've always known in this earth in order to take hold of the life that God has provided to us, in order to take hold of this relationship with God and use these access keys, you have to put yourself aside. You have to put yourself aside. You have to put other things aside, things that would try to encroach on this relationship. You have to put it all aside and consider yourself dead to all those things. Now you only choose to live for God do what God wants you to do. Go where he wants you to go. Be who he wants to make you to be. That's our one focus. That's our one focus. And it's through that blood, through the testimony, and through death to ourselves that we will overcome every enemy 
but still around us. We will overcome, meaning the enemy won't be able to take control. He won't be able to run us anymore. We won't have to say yes to sin anymore because we have dominion over that. We're free from that. We're free from all of that. Freedom comes through death. Resurrection comes through death. You're resurrected into this new life, this new relationship through considering yourself dead with Christ, crucified on the cross with Jesus. That's when that resurrection life can really take hold and become a reality in this world. To deny yourself, Jesus said, deny yourself, deny yourself and come after me and take up your cross. Your cross is death. The cross always depicted death, death to yourself, deny yourself, disown yourself. You know, I heard it said once that you, we can be too heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. And when I first heard that, I was a very young Christian. And when I first heard it, I thought, ooh, that doesn't sound good because I do want to be earthly good, right? So, okay. And this person said this to me just because I was talking about praying quite a bit. I spent a lot of time in prayer and, I, and, and in the word and, you know, just kind of really my focus was really on spiritual things, on things of God. And they just made the statement, well, now be careful. You could be too heavenly minded. You're no earthly good. And as a young believer that didn't know any better, I took that correction and thought, oh, okay. And I kind of pulled back. I kind of thought, okay, maybe I'm going too far. Maybe I'm being too radical. Well, let me tell you, just as Satan spoke through Peter, Satan spoke through this good intentioned Christian. Because let me tell you, Jesus was the most heavenly minded man that ever walked the planet. And he did more earthly good than anyone who has ever lived. So it is not a true statement. It is not a true statement. To live in this area of using these access keys, living in the kingdom of God, overcoming, overcoming through all that Jesus has done for us, this is to be heavenly minded. This is to be heavenly minded. This is living in the kingdom of God. And if somebody considers this too heavenly minded, well, then they're not really interested in heaven. They're not really interested in God. But if you're a true Christian of God, you need to keep your focus above or you will be no earthly good. So I, I would change that from too heavenly minded is no earthly good to too earthly minded, no earthly good. Listen. We have a lot of people walking around that are very earthly minded and they're not doing anything for anybody for eternity. It is a heavenly Christ that makes heavenly Christians and it's heavenly Christians that are going to be able to bring the truth to a fallen world. It's not a fallen world that's going to lead people to the truth. It is heavenly minded Christians where heaven is full in you. You're living in the kingdom and the kingdom is in you. You're the one that will bring that reconciliation between heaven and earth, between God and fallen man. Don't ever believe otherwise. We are overcomers. We have overcome through the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. And by not loving our lives, even unto death. That is how we overcome. I'm going to close this video today with this scripture in Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was enraged over the woman and went to make war with the rest of her seed who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm reading this right now just to get you ready for the way that these videos are going. At this point, we have finished up the section of teaching on basically our place in Christ, how to begin to develop relationship with God, how to live this Christian life, how God has told us to live every day. This is what we've been going over for the last several weeks. But this scripture in Revelation talks about the dragon, which is just another name for Satan. And it says he was enraged over the woman and went to make war with the rest of her seed. 
The rest of her seed in this scripture is symbolic, basically speaking of Christians. We are of the seed of Christ. We are of the seed of Christ. We are of the offspring of Christ. Jesus said, I came to die so that many brethren would come along, so that many other would be born into the family. That's why he came. But it says here that the dragon or Satan is enraged and making war with those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's you and me. If we're, if we're true Christians, we keep the commandments of God. We do what he tells us to do. We follow the teachings of Jesus and the testimony of Jesus Christ, the word of God. And he is here to make war with us. Now, we've just learned that we're overcomers, right? So you're probably thinking, okay, wait a minute, we're overcomers. How can he make war with us? Oh, he can still make war. And the next videos that we're going to be going into, we're going to be literally looking at what this war looks like, what we're up against, and why so many Christians have lost their way, which is what this channel was really birthed out of in the first place, where it came from. I lost my way at some point, not in the sense that I lost my salvation, not in the sense that God ever gave up on me, but in the way that the enemy had the upper hand. He was making war, and I was losing contact with these essential keys of growth. I was forgetting that I was an overcomer. I was not practicing living in the kingdom of God. I was breaking away from some of these things, and I just about lost my way completely. And I believe many Christians have gone that route. Some have lost their way completely. Some are right now questioning, questioning, you know, if they, if they just are ready to give it all up. And it's because the enemy is making war on us. He is making war on the saints of God. And he's going to continue to make war against us until he's put it completely out of the way, until we're taken up. To be with Jesus Christ forever, he's going to continue to make war. But we need to stand up for our sisters and brothers that are falling down, losing their way, being so overcome by the enemy that they're forgetting who they are. They're forgetting everything that's, in their, that's at their access. So we're going to go on discussing in the next several videos how the enemy is making war against us how he's causing us to lose our way how he's taking many christians off this right path and taking them down a road of deception a road of being demonized a road of destruction we're going to be discussing that in the next several videos so please stay with me I do trust that you are hearing something that's enlightening you, that's bringing more understanding, and that's helping to set you free more. Stay with me. I so appreciate the attention you give to these videos, the time you give to listen to them. Stay with me for next video, and we'll be moving on to some great teaching. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye.